Hey guys. Well, this video is going to be about basic maintenance on monocoat covering. And not just monocoat, but your ultra coats, uh, aura covers, uh, china coat, whatever you have. Most iron on coverings are pretty much the same, even though they are very different. But the, the chemistry of all of them is pretty much the same. And no matter how good a covering job you do, or what kind of covering you use, occasionally you're going to get wrinkles, you're going to get sags, and this video is just going to show what's the best way to to get rid of them, make it harder for them to come back. Um, when you have monocoat over monocoat uh, covering jobs and they start to kind of peel a little bit, how to properly put those pieces back down and make it so they won't pull up again. That's going to be the whole purpose of this video. Um, I've had some issues with comments in the past. Um, I'm a pretty small channel, you know, I got less than a thousand subscribers. Um, so I, I do have a chance to see all the comments. And before anybody chimes in saying, well, if you want to get, if you want to not have wrinkles in your covering, fly foamies. Yeah, I don't want to hear it. Uh, nothing wrong with flying foamies. They're great. It's a great part of the hobby. Not my thing. And I think a lot of other people are in the same boat I am. Even though I'm only in my 30s, I'm old school in the hobby. I've been in this hobby for a long time. And I like to build airplanes. I like covering. I like engines. I like messy airplanes. That's just the way I like it. And along with many others. So, um, before we get started, I'm going to take you for a walk around the shop and show you what it looks like when you live in a climate like I do. Um, I'm in southwest Michigan, so in the wintertime, uh, a lot of snow, and in the basement area down here, oh, excuse me, it gets very dry. So, trying to figure out the best way to put it, uh, when you get wrinkles in your covering, it doesn't necessarily mean you didn't do a good job covering or there's an issue with the covering. The problem is, is the wood structure underneath the covering has shrunk due to the dry climate like in a Michigan like in a basement up here in Michigan even though the temperature down here stays the same year round in the summertime I run a dehumidifier because it you know it gets pretty it's pretty moist down here but in the winter time it's super dry and I know most of you know what I'm talking about. Every time you go to turn on the frickin' light to the basement, you're bracing yourself for the giant zap you're going to get. That's what we have. So in the wintertime, the structure underneath the covering dries out. It actually shrinks a little bit. So what happens is because the wood structure underneath the plane has shrunk, the covering's up there going, you know, I got nothing to stick to. So you get the wrinkles, you get the sags. Now, having said that, Once again, I'm at a loss for words. It's been so freaking cold this past week, you know, minus 30 degrees. Yeah, my, my brain's fried, so I've spent way too much time outside. Not enough oxygen to the head. Um, so first we need to figure out the difference between covering that has actually not adhered properly and just needs to be tightened up and re-shrunk, or covering that is just wrinkled because the airplane is actually dried out. In the basement. So let's take a walk real quick. All right. First of all, in my basement, it is very dry right now. I could run a humidifier, but I really don't want to do that. So let's look at something to give a good example on what happens in the winter time to an iron on covering. Now, this is my top flight Mustang. It's all glass, you know, panel lines, rivets, the whole nine. But the tail feathers are covered in fabric. And look at that. They're all they're all bubbled and and icky looking. Now, I'm not gonna shrink that. Because come springtime, when I start to get more moisture in the basement, that will all that'll be drum tight again. So I'm not gonna mess with that. And it's kind of the same with most coverings. It might be kind of hard to see, but on my Senior Falcon, see the covering, that this plane hasn't come down off that rack in two years. But 
the covering is all saggy and wrinkly, but come spring and summertime, that'll be tight. I won't even have to do anything to it. So the only time I would ever really take wrinkles out of any of my planes that are covered in the winter time is if I'm taking them to a show, put them on display, or going out to fly. Because you don't want to shrink your covering too much. If you're constantly shrinking your covering, it's going to get to a point where the material has shrunk to its capacity and it physically won't shrink anymore. So then you're screwed at that point. Now for another example, my P47, I haven't touched this with an iron pretty much ever since the first year I built it. And it's going on six years, it's six years old now. As you can see, I got some, some sags in the covering. Now I could hit that with a heat gun or lightly go over it with my iron, but there's no need to because this is a balsa sheeted structure underneath and the winter time it has shrunk. And come summertime, it will swell and that covering will be nice and tight again. So for the most part, you'll find that when you take your plane out for the first time in the season, once you're out in the sun for a little bit, most of those wrinkles will go away. Now, for your basic covering maintenance, these are the types of materials you're going to need. Of course, you're going to need your sealing tools, your basic iron, and your trim iron. We'll get into the purpose of a trim iron here in a minute. Now keep in mind, this video is not to show how to cover an airplane. It's how to maintain the covering that's already there. Since there's fewer and fewer builders every year, uh, people are still buying arcs that are covered with monocoat, ultra coat, whatever. Of course, the heat gun. And if you so desire, use a covering sock. And when you're using a heat gun, you need something to keep your, your hand warm while you're pushing down the cover, and we'll go over that in a minute. Now, another thing that really helps is to have some literature. And I've collected some over the years. These are just uh, some of the ones that come to mind. These, have no lo these are no longer published. I mean, this, this one dates 1977. So, but this one is you know, applying heat shrink and plastic covering to model airplanes. And the uh, Modeling Master, or Master Modeling and No Secrets by Harry Higley, those are awesome books. They're no longer published to my knowledge, but you can find those online. Excellent stuff to read. Now once I'm done with this video, I'm going to upload this. Now this video is going to show more in-depth on how to apply covering material. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to show any of that stuff because there are so many different techniques. Um, it's just kind of start a pissing match with, well, this way is better than this way, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I don't want to get into that. Other things for covering maintenance, basic lighter fluid. This is just, you know, cheap, cheap old lighter fluid from the gas station and a nice cotton rag. Now that serves a multi-purpose and we'll go over that in a minute. Um, other material, other things we're going to use, the monocoat trim solvent. Most people probably have this and have never used it, or not sure what it's for, or why they would even need it. I'll show you. If you're old school like me, you probably still have some no heat laying around. This is just a different brand of the trim solvent, and once again, to my knowledge, I don't think it's available. I just wanted to show you. You know, it just shows how long I've been doing this. But same stuff, just different companies. So for the demonstration purposes today we're going to be using a wing from my uh, Great Plains Trainer 60. I guess I can't say it's Great Plains, I scratch built it from a set of plans because it's it's the best flying trainer in the world in my opinion. I mean when you have a trainer with a fully symmetrical wing, uh, sky's the limit. They fly fantastic. I built it for a little bit of nostalgia. For those that don't know the Trainer 60 was the very first trainer I ever flew. My first RC experience was a Goldberg Gentle Lady, but the first trainer that I actually flew was a Trainer 60. So it's always had kind of a warm place in, in my heart. So now having said that, let's get to some, uh, some covering maintenance. Okay, the first thing we're going to look at is what to do when you have 
a wrinkly surface. You have bubbles and wrinkles. How are we going to get those out? Now, as I said before, chances are these are all going to go away come spring and summertime anyway. But I'm going to go ahead and shrink them down just for the demonstration purpose. Now you'll notice that if you cover an airplane properly and shrink covering properly, you should never have sags between your open bays. Because this is already based on an open structure. Um, your ribs, because the way they're interlocked, really aren't going to move around too much and they can't really you know, shrink and expand vertically. You know, they're in there pretty good. The surfaces that are going to be affected are when you have solid balsa or you know, you know, aileron strips. These are all surfaces where that wood is really going to shrink down in the winter time. But then once it gets warmer and more humid, they'll stretch out. Now if you live in a climate where it's pretty much the same year round, once you cover an airplane, it's never exposed to another climate, so it's already, you know, it's already used to what it's being what it's being used in. So you should never have the majority of these wrinkles. I mean, occasionally from being out in the heat for a long time, you might get some wrinkles, some sags, and those can easily be taken care of with your heat gun. But when you live in an area like I do, it's really hard to keep covering tight year-round. But as you can see, uh, areas that are that are sheeted, you get these little wrinkles, and of course, solid balsa structures. You know, this this balsa is like a sponge with humidity. It just, you know, it changes sizes, just wicked. So first, what we're gonna do, it's gonna be hard to actually take. You know, I'm not a product. You know, I'm not into the whole production thing. I'm holding my camera in my hand so first I'm going to demonstrate how to get these wrinkles out one of the ways to do it is to use your covering iron if it's a monocoat iron have the heat set between one and two which is a a good a good medium heat if you're covering with the the china coat or like a ultra coat covering that's a good temperature to have it set at if you're covering with monocoat, I always have it around two or just under two for putting it on. Because monocoat is the toughest covering out there as far as this type of covering. Uh, and it can also take the most heat. So one method is you can take that iron and you can just very lightly run it over the surface until it shrinks it down and the wrinkles are gone. Now the issue with that is if you're not careful how much pressure you use, you could push those wrinkles into the wood and have a permanent crease. It'll, be, it'll almost look like a little crack almost. So not always the best way. Now depending on the covering job, when I cover I do a lot of heavy overlaps. You know most people when they cover they only do eighth inch overlaps. They're really particular on where they put their seams to have the, the best look possible. I'm not that guy. You know, my covering jobs look really good, but if you get, you know, super close, you can start to see where my seams are. But mine are functional. I can really heat up this area, and I never have to worry about the covering splitting apart right here. Because between the wingtip overlapping to the top and the top overlapping to the wingtip, I got a half inch of overlap, so there is a ton of adhesion there this covering will never separate from it from itself. So now what I'm going to do for this is just use my heat gun and a soft rag and what I'll do is I'm going to heat the area really carefully. The key is is when you're heating it is to hold the gun oh I, I hold the gun closer than most people do but I keep it moving. Even though this covering material is tough if you don't keep it moving you could burn a hole right through it. What I'll do is I'll heat it up, then take the soft cloth and wipe it. And what I'm doing is I'm wiping, I'm pushing down lightly the material and it's sticking to the wood and you know smoothing it out. And once it gets to the point where after I've run the heat gun over it and there are no more wrinkles, then I can firmly take the cloth and push it down. So I'm pushing that hot covering onto the wood and it's gonna, I mean, and once that adhesive sets up and cools down, it should never wrinkle there again, except for this time of year. There's not a whole lot you can do about that. There's, there's stuff on the market that you can pre-coat the wood before. I don't use any of that stuff. 
because what if I wanted to recover this airplane after a crash or whatever and if you coat this with like balsa rate or other sticky materials you're never going to get that covering off there so that's the only problem now another thing is when you're using your heat gun and you have areas where you have covering over covering and pinstripes be extremely careful too much heat will will you know distort this pinstripe it could pull the covering away be very careful the key to a heat gun is keep it moving all right so I'm going to set the camera over aside and I'm going to take these wrinkles out and you'll be able to watch me and how I do the motions here then uh, I'll bring you back in for a closer look and show you what it looks like when it's all shrunk okay got the heat gun plugged in it's ready to go um, you can you can use one of these gloves that you can get from top flight they go over they just go over your hand and as you're heating it you can use that to push the covering down um, sometimes I use it when I'm doing larger surfaces I use that and kind of heat a little bit here go over the surface that type of thing but for this uh, particular task here I'm just going to use this uh, this nice uh, cotton cloth so first let's get the heat gun going I always use the highest temperature possible because as long as you keep that heat gun moving you can pretty much get away with whatever temperature you want all I'm doing here is just testing it on my skin to see how hot it is. Sounds stupid, but I've developed pretty much a full body callus from this stuff over the years. Now we're pretty hot. We're ready to go. I'm going to start down here at the corner and just lightly hit the area and pull away. And those wrinkles are gone right now. They are completely gone and it just took one little pass. So I'm going to make another pass right here. Completely gone. All right, work my way up to the top. Now I'm getting up to where the pinstripe is. Very, very quick. The wrinkles are completely gone, all right? But now I'm gonna hit the area again. Keep the gun moving. Go aside, and I'm gonna push it down with that cloth. Just kind of checking it over. And I'm gonna go up here to my wing tip. Try to keep you in the focus here. Do the same thing. Little spot. Heat it up. Little spot. Now you'll notice I do a lot of this with the heat gun. Because I'm just I'm fanning the heat across the surface. You don't necessarily have to go back and forth like this. As long as you keep that heat source moving I'm going to go down here to the aileron and just do this very tip here, make one quick pass along, wipe it, go down here, quick pass, wipe it. That looks perfect. Set this aside, let it cool down. Alright, let's see what we got. Okay, when we look at it now, absolutely perfect no wrinkles I didn't push down any creases when you look at the edge of the aileron here where I did it no wrinkles then we get into where I didn't do it we got some wrinkles so was that really that hard people that complain about you know oh the covering takes too much work I mean come on that took absolutely nothing good to go and everything up top looks good. You can see where I shrunk it here. Looks absolutely perfect. And then we kind of go down a little ways. And you can see some sags around there where I didn't touch it. But it just took super light heat and pushing it down with that cloth. It's just as easy as that. Now, another technique, or not, not a technique, but another thing you should look for when maintaining uh, your covering is what to do with the little trim iron. Now when I upload the video here um, that'll show exactly what the trim iron is for. Uh, many of us have these and have never used them. Honestly I've had this thing my entire life and I've only used it this past few years and I'm wishing I used it a long time ago because this thing is freaking awesome. But where does it come in handy when maintaining covering? Well 
it's kind of hard to see down in there and you can't really tell if your covering is secure in your hinge gaps <coughs> oh, excuse me but when you have your heat iron like this and all you gotta do is just make a quick pass right down in there just to ensure that everything is secure everything is tight because as long as your covering is in good shape and you keep it clean you know this is a glow powered airplane I mean look at this this whole area gets slobbered with glow fuel it all looks brand new you know this plane looks brand new I've had it for I've had it for a while and a lot of people disagree with this statement but a glow powered airplane the covering job will last longer and stay shinier than a gas or electric and here's why and it's not always the case it all depends on how well you take care of your models but when you have glow fuel and the oil on top of this covering that is basically uh, kind of think of it as when you put oil on your fingers if you have dry skin you put lotion on your hands and you, you wipe it through your hands now your skin is nice nice and moist it's not dry it's not going to crack it's the same principle for this plastic type covering so as long as you keep your airplanes clean and you're constantly cleaning them after you fly and then you're, when you're done for the day and you clean it because of that constant care to the covering it keeps this covering pliable it keeps it nice and as long as you keep up on your maintenance it'll look good forever well until you crash it um, but when you look at uh, gas or electric airplanes that are covered with an iron-on film like this you'll notice they kind of start to get dry and they crack and the covering will crack they get brittle I've seen some where an electric airplane an open bay you could take your finger and it would blow a hole right through the covering and I'm talking Monaco just because it dried out because it's electric you never clean it you never maintain it because there's no need to it's electric and the kind of the same thing with gas you hardly ever clean it you only wipe off the areas where you get the little bit of oil residue but with a glow powered airplane you know you're, you're getting oil all over the whole damn airplane so yeah it takes a little bit of extra care but the covering stays beautiful pretty much for a lifetime now I'm sure a lot of you disagree with me but hey I have I have the planes to prove it and of course if you don't maintain your covering you don't keep them clean yeah they're going to deteriorate you're going to get oil into these tight areas it's going to get under seep in there and the covering will never stick and you're going to ruin your airplane it all depends on how you well how well you cover and how well you maintain your covering you know it just takes a short as you saw right there it takes such a short period of time to take those wrinkles out no big deal all right on to the next tip all right, just for demonstration purposes, I've put this white uh, piece of trim on my airplane. By no means am I actually putting this here. You know, it, it, this does not fit with the, the theme here. But I just have just a rough cut piece of monocoat here. But let's say for your color scheme, you had a piece of trim covering right here. So it's over top of open bays, some hard surfaces, but for the most part, it's just a piece of covering that you want to lay down right here. Maybe you want to underline the name of the airplane or whatever. But bottom line is, it's just a piece of trim monaco. Now the ways to keep these looking good, because what, what's the most common thing that's going to happen right here? I'll show you. You're done flying for the day. You're, you're wiping your airplane down, and you come up to the edge here, and you run over that and you just picked it up and peeled it back. Well, that's very common when it comes to a covering over covering area like this because to apply this you use very low heat or else you get bubbles as you try to put it on. So, let's just say this is an ARF. You know, I'm not going to diss my beautiful airplane and call it an ARF, but let's say it was and it had this piece of trim covering here and that corner piece has has flaked up. How am I going to keep it from doing it again? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a plain, ordinary lighter fluid, put it on my cotton rag, and it's peeled up right here, 
and I'm going to wipe it this way. I'm not going to wipe it this way because obviously I'm just going to peel it even more. And I'm going to go over that whole surface with the lighter fluid after I've already cleaned it with Windex or whatever you use at the field to clean your airplanes. And just go over it. And that's going to get all the crap off there. Make sure there's nothing underneath the surface that will keep it from sticking. Now the next thing is your monocoat iron. Have it at a low setting, just enough to activate the heat. So monocoat, I would keep it at, oh, yeah, right between one and two. That's a pretty good spot. But before I hammer that down with the heat, take a squeegee. Of course, I don't use a squeegee. I use an old piece of aileron stock with a slight round on it because this won't gouge into the wood. And I'll run that across it just to make sure that there's no, no bubbles in there. Because doing this will create some friction, which creates heat and will kind of cause a little, like a, almost like a suction, and it'll keep that piece of covering down. You can even take your finger and wipe it over it, and now it's down. Then having your iron at a low setting, start at one end and just kind of lightly go over it and work toward the end. So any bubbles that you're developing as you go will work their way out the end. And be very careful not to just put your iron on and go for broke or start doing one of these numbers because then you're going to get a wavy line in there. But just really light, just re-adhere it. The less heat you use, the less chance of bubbles underneath you're going to get. All right. So remember that, less heat. And that will get it secured back down. Now most of the time, it's just the very corner that peels up, because it's, it's a sharp corner, right? So you, you, know, you, you, you come in contact with your fingers or your rag, and it, it peels up those little corners. How to keep that from happening? Well, start with your iron, lightly go over the tips, or you know, for that I wouldn't even use that. I would go back to my heat tool. I would put it on the lower setting. Because these are not variable, like the larger iron, you have a high and a low setting. Uh, depending, This one's old, I don't think it heats up as well as a new one would. So this one I would probably keep it on high. But then I would just go onto that edge and secure it down just like that. Just be very careful. Just go over the edge, let it cool, let it dry. Now, this is where this stuff comes in. Now, normally this is used if you wanted to put this piece on there. Let's say I really wanted to put this piece on there. I have very, honestly, very little experience using the no heat or the trim solvent to actually apply covering. I've tried it a few times in the past when I was a, when I was a teenager, and I probably wasn't doing it right, so I didn't have the greatest results. But where I have found that this stuff really shines, it's right here. Now, We've already put this covering down, right? Okay, so next we're going to take our trim solvent, or if you're old school and still have some, the good old no heat, and we're going to put some just on the edge of a rag. I mean, I'm not actually doing it because I do not want this on my airplane. And once it's on there, we're going to go over the edge. We're going to go over the edge of that. Of course, going away from the material, because if you go this way, you're going to peel it up again. And just really light. You need very, very little of that. Don't soak your rag. Just a quick, you know, just a real quick. That's all you need. And just go over it. Then once, you, once you're happy with it, go to a dry part of the rag and just a couple more times and let it set. And what you'll find, and you may have to do it a couple times depending on how many times this is peeled up. If it's in an area where you get constant fuel, it's gonna, it might take a few more treatments of this to get it to really stick down well. But what you'll find is that that no heat will seep in around the edges. Even though this was applied with an iron, that no heat will kind of soak in there around those edges a little bit. And this does exactly what it says. It will, adhere, it will activate that adhesive with no heat. It's all a chemical reaction. So now you have the 
you have used up the uh, absolute, <laughs> the best use of that adhesive under that covering has been activated by this stuff right here. So what you'll have is around this area, you should never really have it peel again unless you really get in there and you're really not careful when you wipe. When I clean and I have a sharp point like that, I try to you know avoid hitting it directly on. I try to you know go at angles and I, I really don't push really hard and buff my airplanes anyway. But using the trim solvent or the no heat and just wiping it on there, it's 100% fuel proof, it's crystal clear, you can't see it. Um, so when you have a plane like this or an ARF that has covering over covering that's kind of peeling up, that's an excellent, excellent way to go. This stuff is still available. You got to have it. And it not only works with Monocoat, it works with Ultra Coat, any of the other coverings. I'm not sure about your fabrics, though. Um, I've never tried to use this on fabrics. I'm sure it would work because it's just an adhesive or it's just it just activates the adhesive. But I don't know what this would do to like a like a painted solar text or something. I don't know if this would have an effect on the paint. So not sure. I would only use it on the, the hard plastic material type coverings like monocoat. Alright? Worst case scenario, read the instructions. Or better yet, wait wait until I upload this. This shows exactly how to use it. I think. I haven't watched it in years. So that pretty much covers it. Um, just just basic uh, basic wear and tear and covering maintenance. Um, when you have vinyl, another thing, uh, this plane right here, of course, I, I made it look just like it did on the original box. So um, losing my train of thought again. That, that seems to happen a lot with me. Having a uh, the vinyl surface over top of covering, if you use direct heat from an iron, you will completely destroy this vinyl, even at a light setting. So if you have this, if you have a wrinkle that's running through your vinyl, your best bet is to do exactly what I did here: take the heat gun and really lightly go over it, and have your rag handy and just kind of kind of start to kind of smooth it out as you go but very lightly go over it. If there's a wrinkle running through it, don't sit there and, and bake on it and try to get it in one shot. Don't do that. Just really light, wipe it out, really light, wipe it out, and you're good to go. So I think that kind of covers it. It's, it's pretty simple stuff, and it kind of goes back to my my grassroots. I love, I love covering... Um, I, I, even though I'm in the Warbird setting now, I do very little with sport planes or aerobatic planes anymore. I, may, I mainly fly Warbirds, but it just shows you that you can have excellent results with covering, even on planes that uh, would normally be glass or painted. You know, my Corsair and my, my Nose and 310 are a perfect example. These planes are not glass, they are covered. And if you have wrinkles, I just showed you how easy it is to take <clears throat> to take care of them. Now, a place that I've used the trim solvent on here is I have this piece of black covering going over top right here, and it goes to an absolute razor point right there. And over time, from wiping on this and touching it, I'm going to peel that up. So you know what I did? I put a little bit of that trim solvent on a rag, wiped it over there. Yeah, that's not coming off. So some of the things that I've just showed you can be used as a preventative from getting covering to, uh, to ever raise up. Now, I have some planes, and it makes no sense. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Some planes, I never have a single wrinkle ever. Year-round, it doesn't matter where the airplane is, the covering will never wrinkle. And I have planes like this one. This thing wrinkles up like a freaking prune, but rarely do I ever have to touch it with an iron or a heat gun, because once the humidity goes up, like I said before, um, all the all the uh, wrinkles go away. But I mean, look at that—very little work.
and it's perfectly brand new again. Now let's, ima let's imagine this was a glass airplane and you're not looking at monocoat, you're not looking at covering, you're looking at glass and paint. And you had a bubble or a blister or an imperfection in your paint. Well now you gotta sand that sucker off, you gotta do some possibly some filling, then some priming, sanding, blending, painting, wet sanding, clearing, buffing, you know, blah. Or you could just done. So there are advantages to cut to iron uncovering. There are definitely advantages. So keep that in mind. I uh, hope this helped out. Um, it's just a couple, you know, quick and easy tips for uh, for keeping your covering looking good. So next video you see will be the uh, secrets of great covering with top flight monocoat. Hope you enjoy it. Later.